Well, hello, old man cavers. We are back with part two of dent fixing. Roll the credits. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Right, man cavers. Let's get on with this dent. Let me first show you the equipment we need to be filling this, and then I'll show you the procedure of how to fill. Now, while I'm at it, I'm also doing this Honda CRV for a gent, but I probably won't film this one. I'll just do that beside this one. So, yes. Anyhow, what we got to do, or the bits we need is essential bits. Obviously, your filler and your hardener i have an onion board because i find them invaluable obviously a filler spreader and da discs and here we're also going to try out a new posh cheapest chips chinese da that i bought look at this bad boy so what this thing's going to be like i don't know but we'll see so let me get rigged up we'll mix some filler up but to start with we're going to prepare this for filling now, a lot of people would just slap filler straight in. No, 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 no. Always DA or sand around the area you're going to fill. Because if you get filler onto shiny paintwork, you will always have an edge there. No matter how much you try and feather it out, you'll always feel an edge between the filler and the paint. So you've got to make sure. We've got to really DA sand all the way around here. Do you see what I mean? And a little bit up there. So we need to DA sand all around there because that's where we're going to be putting filler. And you want filler to go over a keyed area so it'll actually stick and so you can feather the edges out. My repair panel I put in there, strong as anything. I know I could have took the insulation out and welded it, but honestly, this is just as strong and it was no messing about. So what we're going to do is get you set up in the tripod oh where's the extension lead here it is all right and i'll show you how to da sand that's the da plugged into this posh da works oh look at that works marvelous oh it's got a variable speed on it as well of course that's a way now right that look a half decent tool So we're going to start with 80 grit disc, 80 grit DA disc. So put him on, to use a DA, a lot of people try and use the edge like this. Don't work. Use it as flat as you possibly can. There we go. <laughs> we go there is our panel now sanded yeah look at that bad boy that little da it's a damn good tool let me get a clean rag right we have some panel wipe so we want to get a clean rag what had no oil and man cave grease on it and we just want to rub over this 
with some panel wipe. That will remove any dust, any contaminant ready for us to put the filler on. And this stuff is fast evaporating, as you can see, look. Yeah. All right, let me just wipe a little bit on my Honda. There we go. So now we are ready to get some filler mixed up. I know, mix and filler, such a straightforward job. Now what an onion board is, if you guys have never seen one, these are brilliant. Instead of looking for bits of cardboard or cardboard boxes to mix the filler up on, these are basically a sheet of paper. And when you've done with your bit of paper, with your filler on, you rip it off and you're left with another bit. So we'll start with a clean bit. Get our filler spreader. There we go. Now how much harden do we need? It ain't rocket science, we just need, I say a peat or golf ball. So we've got two golf balls there. So we probably want that much. That'll be absolutely fine. So mix him in. Just like that. Go over and over. Don't stir it. Because I never mix so well when you stir it. You want to just go over and over like I'm doing here. A lot of people start going like this here. That don't really work so well. There we go. That is just about mixed. So now we can be applying our filler to our panel. So let me reposition, because we've only got about 10 minutes. I was thinking that'll be going off. So where are we gonna fill first? I reckon a bit down there and fill that gash up. So let's get our filler, move our panel wipe, because that's getting in the way. There we go. All right, we're cranked a bit in there. We're cranked another bit in here. We're cranked another bit in here. Now this will probably need four or five fills, so do not try and fill it in one because you'll never do it. And then we'll just use this to put a smidge up here. And we've straight away used our filler. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit off there just so we can get this edge got. We want to get at least one bit in this edge, so I'll take a bit out of here until we can do that. There we go. Look at that. And we've got a hole here. Yeah, let's concentrate our efforts up here to start with. So we'll pull that out of that dent I just put in. Yeah. I say we've got nowhere near enough filler here at all. But we've got a little bit. So we want to come down. Yeah. Go get all the high spots off. Try and get a good edge. What we can work with. There we go. There's our first lot of filler in. All gone. Do not be tempted to go and mix a second lot of filler up and put in over the top of this while that's still wet. If you do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt. That I can promise you. Right. We've filled our gash up there, which is good. So really, we can't do anything until that's done. Until that's dried off. 
I ain't even got enough to go in the Honda, so I'm going to have to mix a little bit up off camera and just put in the Honda. But there you go. All right, we'll be back when this is ready for its second application. Back in a minute. Right, we are back. Our oh, uh, filler is now dry. Now, it's going to be a bit weak in here still because there's a bit of flex in there, so we won't have to put an awful lot of pressure. Now, we're not going to sand this much. We're just going to take the high spots off and then put more filler in. Here we go. bit sanded so we now need to put some more filler in there all right Bob has cut on the grass so you'll have to excuse the noise clean your filler spreader guys give it a good clean so you don't want bits of dry filler coming off your spreader and getting in your new filler. Because that would never end well. You'd end up with bits dragging through your filler and that would be a nightmare. That isn't so crucial at this stage because we've got more filler to go in. But There we are. Let's get this in the van. Oh, it's starting to come now. I can see it already. Look at that. She's starting to look nice. We'll just lose a little bit in that crease. Whoops. Yep, she's starting to look better already. With just the second fill up. Yes. Yeah. Now you don't want to go creating a lot of high spots. So try and get it as smooth as you can with your spreader. And that actually makes things a lot easier. Very light pressure. Like one hair and some air. There we go. Yeah. And another thing with filler is, don't play with it too much. Once you put it in, you know, don't keep manipulating it. Because you're going to have to put quite a few fills in, no doubt. So once you have put it in, just leave it. There we go. There we go. 
second lot of filler in back in a bit right I realized that I'd forgotten to fill this big crease along there now that isn't major but it's enough where it's going to annoy me so we need to prep this bit now for filler so while that's still wet Clean and filler spreaders. Here's our filler spreader. You're wondering, I mean that's that's pretty much gone off actually, so yeah. Scraper. I'm just using an old paint stirrer. Don't try and sand it. Wait till it goes dry. And then that will all just scrape off look. You don't want to put gouges in your plastics. If you damage that edge, that spreader ain't no good. So just give it a little scrape and all that will come off. I mean this ain't a sharp bit of steel, that's just a dull paint stirrer look. So you can just use the edge. There you go. There we go. So let me mix some more filler up. And we'll get another load in there. That looked like this actually. Now oh, this has gone off look. Yeah, okay. Well, we can get a second load in there at the same time. There we go. So we mix our filler. There we go, we'll start by putting one piece in there so we'll get a good load all the way in. Another one over the top. There you go. That'll just get the bulk of that filler out of there. I know I haven't sanded the first lot down, it really don't matter because it's going to need a bit more yet. We are nowhere near on the finishing stages. There we go. We can basically let that go off. And we'll be about right. Oh. Here we go. We've got our load of filler in there. One big long strip. That'll sand out just nice. Right. Back in a minute. There. Yeah. Now we can get a bit more filler in. Back in a minute. Thank <laughs> you. 
Feather your edges out as well with your spreader. Because it's a lot easier to feather them out wet than try and sort them out. Yep, that fill has gone off now. That lot I just made up has gone off. I haven't forgotten, we're still putting a bit in the Honda. <laughs> right. I don't know whether you guys actually want to see me keep putting loads of filler in here. Back in a bit. Right, we got all our filler in. Now then, I think we've got the last fill in. I'll show you how to do the... I've got to do quick because we're getting to the... Well, that's full, that's got to dry. Get a straight edge like a bit of wood. Come along. Run your bit of wood up where you know the panel's flat. There we go. We left a bit of filler on the wood. And we know now that that's level there. So there's a little bit up the sides here we got to do. Oh, filler's starting to go off, look. So we are very close now to just needing one more fill. And this will be finished. Our edge is good up here. Oh yeah, that filler's just gone off, look. We've got a good edge up there. Of course, the van is slightly curved anyhow. So we've got a nice little edge up there. It's about right, that bit. So here now, we know that this is pretty much level. So we'll have a little sand off with the DA. See how we go. Our little gouge is done. And our Honda has got our last little bit of filler in it. There we go. Yeah. Right. So I did put about three more lots of filler in there, but you guys wouldn't want to see a video of me just mixing filler up and putting in. We had a lot to build up because that was a big, low damaged. She's getting there. That was a big, low damaged area all around there. So there you go. And I have checked. Let me get the little thing and show you. I have checked that our vent will fit. So that will fit in there. That will go over there. And that does cover all this edge up in here. What's nasty. That all gets covered up with that vent look. So we ain't got to be too fussy in there. How's that? Right, I say I see this video is starting to get long enough, so I thought, yeah, you're only going to want to see the sort of key bits, so you'll know what we're doing. That's how many fills we're done. You can see by the sheets of paper off the onion board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've had eight fills in there. Look, so she's had eight lots of filler in there. Eight layers, because I say that's a nasty area to repair. Especially with that big gouge what was in here. Mm. That isn't far out now. Still a little bit soft to rub down. So she'll want five more minutes. Then we'll be back. Back in a minute. Right. We'll give that one more little rub down. With our DA and then we'll go over the final. Get Right, now we've nibbed our high spots off, what we can do is, 
We need a block. And a sheet of 80 grit paper. And a block. Now we can probably fold this in half and get two lots out of this. So this is folded in half. There you go. I'll go around our block. Look. And this will make sure we have a flat surface. up here we're actually quite good we've got a little bit down there we're going to want probably one more lot of filler in there as a finishing lot down here we aren't too bad and also That's about right as well. There we go. That is pretty much good. Get our straight edge. Yeah, we're a little bit out in here, look. Yep, that's still a little bit low where I've marked it. So we're going to want a little bit of filler there. And another little skim over these bits just to sort that out. So we want to go heavy in there. And a sort of skim over these to level them off. Let me get some filler mixed. Alright, here we go. This will hopefully be the last lot of filler. So if remember we want a thick bit where I marked it. So you want a nice little heavy bit in there. Feathered out at the bottom a bit. And then we can use another little piece just to smooth all these little imperfections out that are here. So I'm putting very light pressure on here, very light pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure on at all. Remembering where we want our heavy bit. Oh, we've got a little snag down the bottom there. Look. There we go. So where I put it in thick there, I'm putting hardly any pressure on. Just a little bit to smudge it over. So we just want this final skim, which we can hopefully get right for priming. Hopefully. we are just got to try and get as many of these lines out of it as we can. Oh, I'm starting to rip. I'm starting to go off. So I'm playing with it too much. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. I think we might have another little bit here we can put in. Look, there we go. We found another bit to put in there. There you go. Now starting to drag, so I can tell that's starting to go off. So we're going to leave it at that. Because if you work with it too much, after that starts to go off, if that do drag, that's when that get all bitty, and then you know you've got to put another lot in. But I think we've got enough in there now to do what we want to do. 
right there, I get dry, and then be back again with my body fill at hand. Bye bye for now. Right, I think we're back for our final rub down. So, we've still got our 80 grit disc on here. Let's put another one on. We've used two discs so far. Ah. So here we go. Well, let's put our 80 on. And then we're going to keep this dead flat and use it as a palm sand. There we go. There we have it. There's a little bit here. There we go. Oh, that is spot on. Yep, that is pretty spot on, that is. I'm more than happy with that. We ain't finished yet. Let's just do this little side piece. There we go. We're pretty much got that sorted. I ain't bad at all. Now then, some people prime direct over 80 grit. We're not going to prime over the 80 grit. The less scratches you have got to fill in, the better. So we're going to go over them now with 240. There's a 240 disc. If you keep going over it with the 80, you're going to keep removing more and more material. And we want a nice sort of smoothish surface to prime over. So, here's our 240 disc. Let's get on. Here we go. <laughs>
Now once you've 240 this, you can really feel what sort of finish you've got. And that's pretty damn good. That's as good as we're going to get it for what we're doing. That really is. Now the eagle eyed amongst you will notice this edge above this plastic trim. Get your 80 grit paper. Fold him up. Get him in that crease. And give it a big one. And that will take that edge off. There we go, look at that look. Well, there you go, that's pretty much got this panel now ready for primer. If you notice, I just went over the whole thing with 240. And that is really nice. I can feel a little ripple here. But I think... Yeah, there's a little ripple down there, and I bet you there's a metal brace inside. Whew. Yeah, there's a metal bracer on down here, and you can feel that through the metal. There's nothing we can do about it. Absolutely nothing. So that is pretty good. Pretty damn good. Right, we need to get some primer on that. The Honda is also just about rubbed down. I'll finish the Honda, and then we'll see if we can get some primer on this thing today. Right, I'm going to switch you off for a minute, and then we will be back. Bye for now. All right, the eagle eyed among you will notice I haven't got my edge, my line in there. How are we going to do that, you says? Here we go. We have a bit of wood lined up where our line need to be and a one mil disc in the grinder there we go yep. we have come off we have come off wow, we didn't want to come off there like that Ah, we was doing really well till that decided it was gonna go off skew. Yeah. There we go. We have now put our panel line up there, look. Look at that. Perfect. That is how you cut a panel line in. Luckily when that went off, that hasn't took no material out of there. Yep, we've got a nice panel line back in there. A really nice panel line. perfect absolutely perfect now I did notice IV Corps have got a bit of sealer in there between the panel line I'm now starting to pull that out at the bottom so I'm going to try and put a really thin bead of sealer in there to try and match the factory finish the best we can let me see what I can do so I've got my PU sealer and we're going to have a go Put on a thin bead down there. What will come out neat? Whoops, a daisy, that's not come out neat. I'll tell you why. I forgot the cardinal thing. I ain't took the dust off. Look, we ain't took our panel wipe and gone over this. 
That'll be why it was rolling up. That will be why it was rolling up. Because we hadn't panel wiped in that little seam I've just cut. Don't worry, we have got to panel wipe all this again before we put the primer on. So I've really got one chance at this. Well, we're pretty good there. It's just this little top section ain't gone too well. So we'll take this out above there. But we've got a lovely little seam of sealer down there. But can we keep it, continue it in? Perfect. That basically is what we're going to do. This is going to take some getting right, fellas. I've really got to do this all in one, in one hit. Because if we get a join in it, we aren't going to get to keep it up. And we still aren't quite right here. No, nope, we're going to have to come out again. Find that. That actually isn't going to look too bad. No, that actually isn't going to look too bad at all. We will have one more go. Oh, this is perfect. There we go. That is exactly how we wanted it. Oh, spot on. This edge here, like I said, is covered up with that grill anyhow. That is perfect. We now have like a factory seal put back in there. There, look. There's our... See, there's like... If you look here, that's not cut in. There's like panel bond in between these. And we've got to try and replicate that. So we've done this. Perfect. That bead don't stick out very much. Certainly no more than the standard one. There we go. So what we've got to do now. Missing that bit. Because that's going to take ages to dry. We've got to panel wipe the rest of this bit of panel. Mask it off. Ready for us to put our paint on. Hang on. I need to get a blow gun and have a blow about. Right, next step we've got to do. We have air. Blow our DA out. Blow all the crap off it. All out of the motor housing. There you go. Give her a blow out. The last thing you want... I mean, these are kind of the design... Uh, these are kind of designed to take dust from that. But there you go. That's just me being me. Right, let's blow this off. Prepare for a lot of dust. Hold your breath.
blowing up in here because when we're spraying, we don't want dust to come out of there and get in our thing. got all our dust off any polishes and contaminants are now off we don't want to go over our bit we've just done there we are right perfect now we need to get this mask off so I'll get some mask and paper and some tape and we'll be back all right so we put a bit of mask and tape along the back of the trim we're gonna put a little bit up here you will see why soon we want a bit here now I'm gonna back mask off this which involves putting your tape like so and then folding it back on itself. That stops you getting a rough edge. So you'll have a very progressive edge. Which is what you want. Because the last thing you want when you're painting is a harsh line. Now I'll show you another trick of how to do that on this line. So this time, we're going to get our masking machine, which is there. And I'll rip a bit of paper off. And I'll show you how to do that top line. All right, here we go. We have a bit of paper. Yes, the tape is not stuck to it. That's because I ain't got a roll of tape in the machine. So we're going to go this way about with it. If I just stick one end up there. And you're thinking, well, you're masking up the wrong bit. Well, not exactly we ain't. You'll see what I'm going to do so we don't get a... Well, the wasp. So we don't get a progressive line. Right, we've got our paper in place. We want a big long bit of tape right the way along, going half tape at a panel. There we go. There we go. Now what we do, we want two bits of tape, stick them to your chin. Yeah. So you've got two hands to play with. Just lift that up. One bit of tape. Two bits of tape. There you go. We now don't have a rough edge under there. We have a nice progressive edge. What we can mask to. We have gone into our bloody sealer with that tape a bit. But I'll be alright. So that's got that little side of it done. Now we need another little bit of tape down the back. Obviously you can use newspaper, you can use whatever you want. I just happen to have mask and paper because, well, I'm a paint sprayer and that's what we use. There we go. As I say, this is only masking for priming, so we're not getting anything ready for top coat yet. Remember, this is covered up with a rear light, so this don't get seen, this line. 
and we just want to tape that back around the door so it don't go blow on our paint now we want a bit of paper right the way along the bottom and up that slide So we'll hold that up there while we just stick a bit of tape on it. Peel him off. Oh, not quite long enough. Look at that. What a bugger. I was a foot short, but. Cover our plastic up. There we go. Tape this down the bottom so it don't blow up while you're spraying. Now I am going to put a hard edge there because we're on a seam, so it isn't really going to matter. It really ain't going to matter having a hard edge right on this seam. There we go. Now we need another bit to fill in along there, look. There we go. Sorry this video's dragging on a little bit. I might be able to trim it down a little in editing. But son, that some of you guys do like a long video. There we go. That is about right. I think I'm going to cover this bit up so we don't get over spray in that corner. There we go. I don't even know if you guys can see me from where you were from that camera angle. You might not. Can you see me? No, you can't see me. Look. There we go. You were watching a whole load of nothing for a few seconds. There you go. Right. I think now we need to get our mask and... Oh, get our primer, sorry, in the gun and... But I need to get masked up for that first. So, let me get masked up and I'll be back. So, here we are. Let's get our primer on. So, I think this primer's a little bit thick. We might need to put some thinners with it. Right, let's try this again. There we go. Whoa! We don't way too much time. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There
Wow, there's one coat. We should be pretty much ready to go straight over again. Well, there we have it. We have our prime panel. Da, da, da. There we go. All right, I think the overspray is blown away so I can get this mask off. Oh. There we go. Now these masks, Mrs. Man Cave bought me this, absolutely brilliant. I know they ain't air fed, but you don't smell a single thing through these. Absolutely fantastic. Best mask I've had. Short of an air fed one, which we used to have at the Ford dealership. That is brilliant. You just don't smell a thing. Wow, there we go. So, do you remember what all that maggot looked like? Didn't look very good at all, did it? No. Now look what we got. The crease, what was in the side, can you see down there? The crease that was in the side has gone. All that snag we had on there, that big old ripped bit, gone. So yes, plenty good enough for an 06 plate or 56 plate van. There. Yeah. You know, that colour ain't too far out from the silver. We should leave it and have rat look. Nah. Anyhow, Honda is also done. We have patch primed him. Patch primed this, which is excellent. And this week, weather permitting, we'll be getting the entire side of this van sprayed. I'm going to do two sides at a time. So, but remember, only from this line downwards. So this week, this whole side, this whole bit here, from this line down, all this bottom, all the way along, including this bit on the front wing, I'm going to aim to get all of that done this week, yeah? So this side is then done. But, there you go. Will it happen? I think it will. I think that will be absolutely fine. So, there you go, man cavers. We are going to get the two-tone on this side, and that will give us some idea of what the van will look like when that's done. Yes, we have got to cut a window in either here or here, but until I get the inside layout worked out, I'm not going to put a window in. So I don't want to put a window in and then change our mind with the inside and think, crap, the window's not in the right place. So that's why we haven't put any more windows in yet. Right, I'm now going. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry the video was a little bit long. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope I've showed you maybe some tips and tricks that you didn't know. Maybe you did know. Who knows? But there you go. If you want to do a repair yourself, that's how we can do them. I've showed you how to do it by tiger sealing a little bit of metal in. No welding. Just all 
Done and failed. Done and failed. Primed. Don't that look lovely? All right, we're going to go. See you next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha! <laughs> Excellent. There we go. Perfect. Bye-bye for now.